Hi there, friends. I'm meeting all of you after a long time. I hope all of you are keeping well and safe. Today, I want to talk to you about a great mystery surrounding a particular musical instrument. And I'm going to challenge all of you musical detectives out there to research this mystery and see if you can come up with the truth. And for those of you who are writers and fiction writers and dramatists and poets, maybe this mystery will present to you a lovely opportunity to write a beautiful story. Way back in the 1980s, the late 80s and the early 90s, my sister Sonali de Silva and I, uh, both of whom were recorder players, decided we would form the Recorder Society of Colombo and as part of that organize a recorder festival. In preparation for that festival, I got a whole bunch of old ancient instruments, which was part of the Deva Surya Sena collection uh, at the Deva Surya Sena Center. The late Deva Surya Sena had uh, received these instruments from Karl Dolmesh, who was a very great, very well-known English instrument maker, and also somebody who was part of the revival of ancient music and musical performances. So I got those instruments and then I was walking around one day in the Colombo Museum in the instrument section, hoping I might find something there. And lo and behold, in the section dealing with wind instruments, there was an instrument that looked a lot like a recorder. I was completely shocked. And so I immediately contacted my schoolmate, whose mother happened to be the director of the museum at the time, Mrs. Thelma Gunawadana. I went and met her, and with her we walked down to the section, and I was able to handle the instrument, and indeed it looked a lot like this instrument. Uh, this is, of course, a descant recorder. This is uh, made of plastic, though it may look like ivory, and it is actually made by Yamaha. And you can buy this instrument for cheap. I recommend it for beginners and people who'd like to try the recorder out. Now, so I looked at this recorder and I discovered a, that it was a very special instrument and I'll tell you why. But before I talk about the mystery of the recorder in the Colombo Museum, let me give you an insight into the anatomy of a recorder because that will give you some clues to solving the mystery. I have with me four recorders and they're all about the same size as you can see. These are all descant recorders and a descant recorder, um, as much as other recorders like treble recorders, tenor recorders, bass recorders, they all have the same number of finger holes. So as you can see, there are seven holes in front, one, two, three, four, five, six, and here on the side, seventh one, and then at the bottom is actually a hole for the thumb. So we have altogether eight finger holes on the descant recorder. Now, another very interesting piece of the anatomy is the mouthpiece. This particular recorder comes in two pieces, so I can actually take the body out and look at the mouthpiece. As you can see, you blow through this uh, hole, the windpipe, um, and the wind goes down that way and it comes through here, through this window here. Uh, and right there is a, an edge or a knife, we call that the labium or the lip. And that's where the wind hits and makes the sound of the recorder. And uh, I don't know if you can actually see this, but as the, the, there is a block of wood right there in the middle, which we call the fipple or the block. And this is what helps to direct the, the wind when you blow into the instrument to the labia more than uh, or the edge to make the sound like that. Now, I, in some recorders, you can actually push that block out like this. Um, and if you have a recorder that can do that, please be very careful how you do it. You can actually damage the recorder if you don't know how to do it. So I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you really know how to do it. You can actually take that piece of block out and that we called the fipple and you can see the inside of the recorder there. And now friends, with that insight, let me give you some information about the mysterious recorder in the Colombo Museum. Here is a photograph of the instrument and it is by Chintaka Pragit Madhigoda and he has reproduced this photograph in an article which he wrote 
called Playing Non-Music on the Sri Lankan Horanava, and his article is published in a book called Studia Instrumentorum Musicae Popularis, uh, edited by Giza Janishan. And I have put the link below. And um, unfortunately, in this, in, in this photograph, you can only see the underside of the instrument. Um, in this second photograph of the instrument, which I have received from Dr. Shihan De Silva, Dr. Shinahan De Silva is uh, a teacher in, in a university in the United Kingdom, also a great researcher into musical history in Sri Lanka, into the baila, into Portuguese history in Sri Lanka. And uh, she obtained this photograph from the, the Colombo Museum, and I'm very grateful to be able to use them here and acknowledge uh, their authorship here. Um, and she actually uh, spoke about this instrument recently in a lecture she did at the Colombo Museum. Firstly, it is a descant recorder. It's about this size, about one foot in length, and it is made of ivory, or material which I think is ivory. Ivory, as you know, was very expensive way back in Europe at that time, in the 1500s, in the 1600s, even today, ivory is a very expensive material. Uh, and therefore, I believe that this recorder would have been made for somebody who could afford it. So somebody who was either very rich, like a merchant, or came from a very noble uh, family, uh, which had you know inherited wealth. Um, that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is that the recorder in the museum has eight holes, just like this one. It has seven holes in front and a hole at the back. Unlike this recorder, it can this recorder can be taken into two parts, uh, but the recorder in the museum is made out of one piece of ivory, so you cannot take the recorder apart. It has lost its block or fipple. Um, this part of the instrument has disintegrated and got destroyed. And so you don't see it on the recorder in the museum. And if you look at the labium of the instrument in the, in the museum, it is damaged. So you can probably not play it even if you reconstructed it, but that uh, labium is damaged. So with that said, um, the instrument is very much, in my view, a descant recorder. Now, a very important, two important points I want to make about that recorder in the museum. Firstly, recorders are played with the right hand on top and the left hand at the bottom. This is the way in which most modern recorder players would play the recorder. And I think from about the late Baroque uh, onwards, recorders were built with the uh, left, uh, left hand to be played on top and the right hand at the bottom. And one of the re and for that reason, you would see that all of these uh, six holes are more or less in line, whereas this hole at the very bottom is angled to the right hand side so that your little finger on the right hand side could actually reach it. Now, the recorder, the ivory recorder in the Museum of Colombo does not have a right angled little finger hole. It has a left handed little finger hole, which means this hole is actually on the other side of the recorder. That tells me a lot about that recorder. It is obviously a recorder which has been built and played by somebody who was left handed. So the person would have played with the right hand on top and the left hand below so that the little hole on that side could be reached by the little finger on the left hand side. So this was a custom built recorder, I think, for a left handed player. Uh, and I say it's custom built because obviously it, uh, it could not be rotate, rotated to the other side. So uh, on modern recorders, this little uh, tail piece can come off so you can actually rotate the uh, the little finger from one side to the other like that um, uh, and 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 adjust it if you want 
that was you can't do that with the recorder in the museum it's fixed to uh, so that it can only be played by somebody who's left-handed now here's a recorder which you will find in the music museum in St Cecilia's Hall in Edinburgh Scotland in the United Kingdom it is a descant recorder made of ivory and you will see two little holes at the very bottom of the recorder and this was because if you were left-handed or right-handed you could block the appropriate hole with some wax so that you could then play the instrument this particular instrument is in the renaissance style but one, what one might call the transitional renaissance style so it's a style that has a little bit of the baroque type of instrument but also uh, is mainly uh, built around uh, the renaissance style and therefore it is in one piece baroque uh, instruments came sometimes in two or three pieces but the fact that it is in one piece is very important as also is the case with the instrument in the colombo museum so these are the clues to the mystery who was this person who was this nobleman who was this rich individual who could afford a uh, ivory recorder and which was custom built which tells me you're not going to invest somebody is not going to invest in an expensive ivory recorder unless the player person was really you know probably a very good player and enjoyed playing that instrument so it was a left-handed player who brought this instrument all the way from europe to Sri Lanka, Ceylon as it was then called. Was it a Dutchman during the 16 to the 1700s? Was it a Portuguese merchant or a sailor or a soldier who would have been in Sri Lanka between 1550 to 1650 or thereabouts? Was it uh, an Englishman? Possibly, but I don't think it was an Englishman because by the time the English got to Sri Lanka and uh, started uh, colonizing Sri Lanka, the recorder had gone uh, into decline in Europe and uh, it was not no longer a, a popular instrument as it was during the Baroque period or the Renaissance um, uh, uh, and the, during the time of the Portuguese and the Dutch when they were colonizing Sri Lanka. So it is most likely that it is either a Portuguese or Dutch instrument. In fact, at the museum, when I saw it many years ago, it was labeled as from the Portuguese period, although the labeling currently says that, the, that it is actually an Indian instrument. And in my view, that is a wrong classification, a completely wrong classification. And the museum, I believe, should reassess the origins of that instrument. Now, who brought this to Sri Lanka? All the way from Europe. There was no Suez Canal. It would have come by ship all the way around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa to Sri Lanka. Did the person die here? Was it a soldier or a sailor who died here during a war or from disease? Was it a noble person or was it something built and gifted to a Sri Lankan nobleman or to a, uh, you know, a noble person here or somebody very rich in Sri Lanka? And then how did this instrument find its way to the museum who brought it to the museum how did the museum acquire this lots of mystery around the instrument and so i think for a dramatist for a poet this is fertile ground for a really lovely narrative a fictional narrative perhaps but for those who are musical detectives and researchers i think this would make a wonderful research project till we meet again stay safe bye